Have you ever found uh, when you're drilling a passage to try and get rid of some kind of mistake that it doesn't always have the effect that you're hoping for? It certainly happened to me on more than one occasion and I think I've discovered perhaps at least one way of trying to fix this. Let me explain. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do think about subscribing. Simply click on the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen now, and it's all done for you. One approach that I'm sure pretty much every pianist uses from time to time when trying to learn difficult material is that of drilling. So by drilling I mean repeatedly repeating small sections over and over again to try and get them into the fingers so to speak. However, I've occasionally found that no matter how many times I do this, sometimes it just doesn't fix the problem. I read a very interesting blog article recently about the actual importance of having a specific goal in mind when we practice piano. And then it actually occurred to me that very often, especially if I'm just drilling something, I don't have any goal more precise than get it right. This then led me to thinking about something I remember reading in Graham Fitch's ebook piano practice series. And he uses the expression of having an internal quality control inspector who will check everything that we've played and decide whether or not it passed the quality gate. Paraphrasing what Graham said, he basically said that first we think about what it is we want to do, then we do it, and afterwards we let our control inspector just check whether or not we got the result that we wanted. Of course, what the criteria might be will be very dependent on the music that we're playing and what we're trying to improve. It could be something like speed, or it could be articulation, or dynamics, or rubato, or phrasing, indeed anything. However, the key point is that if we've not got a precise idea in our minds of what we want to achieve and what we want it to sound like, then how can we expect our internal quality control inspector to be able to decide whether or not it passed the test? This then brings me back to that blog article. Before we even touch the piano keys, we should have a very, very clear view of what we actually want to achieve. Or to put it a different way, what will constitute a pass to our quality inspector? Let's say, for example, that we're just trying to get a passage more even and we're concentrating on small groups of notes at a time. So before we touch the keys, we need to have decided which notes do we intend to play, how fast do we intend to play them, what dynamic do we intend to have, what articulation do we intend to have. All of this needs to be clear in our mind before we actually press the first key. And then, once it's clear, we actually play the passage that we were thinking of in exactly the way we wanted to do it, and we let the quality inspector analyze the results. Let's say then that when we do this, for the sake of argument, the passage is still bumpy. A natural reaction, and I'll certainly admit this is probably what I would do nine times out of 10, is to quite simply repeat it again. However, I think this is where we're missing a trick. Rather, what we should be doing is letting our quality inspector tell us exactly what was wrong. So where was the bump between which note and which note? Which finger was causing the problems or which fingers were causing the problems? Once we've done this, and of course we do this before we repeat, then we make sure that all of that is being consciously worked on when we do the next repetition. Let's just say now then, after having done this, we're still not happy with the result. I think then we have to admit to ourselves that perhaps we're not really ready to be drilling this particular passage yet, and we now need to switch to problem-solving mode. And that means we need to start trying to work out what it is that's going wrong. 
Of course, the problem could be any one of a number of things, couldn't it? It all depends on the music we're learning. Whatever problem it is we're trying to fix, I think the key thing is having the effective practice strategies that allow us to do that. And this is why I continually recommend Graham Fitch's ebook series on piano practice. It's a fantastic resource and I wholeheartedly recommend everybody gets a copy of it. I think the key thing to remember is that we don't simply keep repeating things incorrectly. We need to make sure that whatever strategy we're using, we've got a very clear goal in mind and that we're able to guide our internal quality inspector in terms of analysing the results of our playing. Of course, depending on our level and depending on what we're trying to fix, this could all happen almost imperceptibly to the casual listener or there could be an actual pause, a silent pause while we think. I remember seeing a video on YouTube of Seong Jin Cho when he was rehearsing for a recital in Germany playing some Debussy. And as he was playing through the pieces, suddenly I noticed that he started repeating one of the sections using different rhythms until he then went back to playing it normally and continued with the piece. Now, if I'd not been paying attention, I probably wouldn't even have noticed this because there was no break, there was no anything. Everything remained the same, the articulation, the dynamics. It was simply that he'd identified something he wasn't that happy with and he wanted to fix it there and then. Personally, at my own level and with my own standard of playing, I found that the best approach is to actually have a pause, a physical pause, even if I just want to confirm to myself that I want to repeat this section that I've just played in exactly the same way. I'm sure we all have this tendency to think in our practice sessions that any time we spend that's not actually pressing the keys is wasted time. But of course, Liszt very famously said that at the piano we should think 10 times and play once. And clearly, there was a man who knew how to get results. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click the little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.